Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's RTC TV4 broadcast coming to you live from Caston High School, where the your Cast and Comets Grapplers are hosting the Culver Community. Uh, I'm having a brain fart. Who what are the what are Culver? They're the Cavaliers. They're the Cavaliers. Thanks. I'm joined on the other headset by one of our junior high grapplers, Simon McGrew. Simon, welcome to the broadcast. It's good to be here. Well, let's see how many uh, technical difficulties and knowledge difficulties we get into tonight. I brought Simon on board. Number one, sat next to him at quite a few sporting events, and he runs quite the good commentary. And number two, he knows the sport. Uh, we are going to be starting off tonight with some girls' matches where they're going to be run as JV. And first up, we will be wrestling... Uh, Maddie Sproul facing off against, I believe this will be Brooklyn Lefebvre. Lefebvre locking it up. Sproul backs away a little bit. Doing some hand fighting here. Sp Sproul with the knee tap. Sprout now grabbing in the back of the head. Hand fighting. Attempted a shot there by Sprout. Not able to get anything. Competitors disengaged. Looking for their opportunity. It's a bit of a different environment from the uh, last broadcast. It's Saturday we had the cast in Super 6, and there are six schools worth of fans and competitors in here. Sproud, knee tap, a little bit of a penetration. Didn't feel like she had that shot, so she backed out of it. Under a minute here in the first period. Thirty two seconds. Twenty seconds. Referees given a caution for stalling here. Sprow got the leg. She's got one second, uh, not able to finish the takedown. At the end of the first period, we're still scoreless here. Culver chooses bottom, referee's position here. Sproul goes for that tight waist ankle. Now struggling for a mat return. Prevents the points there. Loses control though. Lefebvre hasn't come around behind to get the two point reversal. Hasn't disengaged. She's going straight for the pin. Has Sproul and a bit of a chicken wing looking to sink the half. Maddie's in a bit of trouble here and there's the pin. Looks like it'll be Vela versus Cheyenne. So Ariana Vela versus Cheyenne Price here. Ariana gets the takedown. Mm, has her bundled up. 
Vela getting good map position. Price now on her back, struggling to kick out of this. Back points occurring, and there's the pin. And that's going to wrap up our girls' matches. Now proceeding into the guys' varsity meet. We're going to be starting at the 175-pound weight class. And looking at the roster, Culver does not have anybody in the 75-pound weight class, so we should be starting off with a forfeit. Going to cast in the cane, thank you. So that'll put six points on the board for Kasten. Next up at 190, we're going to have Culver's Owen Tanner facing off against Kasten's Pete Duvall. Well, I say that, Duvall was just given the forfeit. So I don't know if we had a missed weigh-in or if we had uh, somebody out sick. Of course, there's plenty of sickness going around. Now in 215, we've got Isaiah Vela facing off against Kasten's Brody Bruder. Brewer, Vela heavy on the head there. Brewer gets an inside arm control, disengages. Vela brings him in close. Brewer looking for that inside control, can't quite get it. Better just disengage. Brewer with good head snap there. Lock back up and working towards the edge here. Imagine Brewer's feeling all of those because he actually has a bit of a uh, bit of uh, headgear burn from Saturday. Brewer with a great sprawl. See, he's got that leg hooked. He's working backwards, looking to put head pressure on. Needs to get that head pressure on and then disengage his leg. Gets Vela broken down to the mat. We're under 10 seconds, though, in this first period. Brewer gets around, gets his two points. Goes for the one-on-ones, and that'll conclude the first period. Culver chooses bottom. Official called a blood timeout. Again, I think Brewer, I think that his headgear probably rubbed on that injury. Yeah, I can see it from here. Got a little bit of blood at the hairline. He's going to get that cleaned up. While they're working on getting that bandaged, we are going to step away and say thank you to our sponsors for allowing us to bring you this broadcast. Stay tuned. You're watching Cast and Comments Wrestling here on RTC TV4. And we're back after that blood timeout. Brewer goes with a tight waist. Vela, good job getting those hips forward. He's looking to break that hold. 
And they go out of bounds. They'll reset. Brewer again with that tight waist ankle. Vela propping out hard. Vela back to his feet. Brewer keeping a hold. And there's the escape point to Vela. Locked back up in the center. Lots of head pressure there. Those head snaps can make you forget what county you're in. Under a minute and here in the second period. Brewer disengages, re-grabs. Brewer with the sprawl. And the referee's gonna call him out of bounds, have him reset. They've locked up again. It's amazing the difference between big man wrestling and, and at the lighter weight classes. Culver given a point for stalling. Ties the competitors up as we get ready to head into round three. We're under 10 seconds now. And since Caston deferred for a second period, Coach Evans puts Brewer in referees, probably looking for that quick escape point. Sits out. Brewer works his way to his feet and gets two points for that reversal. Has the half started. Vela to his feet, he'll get the escape point. Brewer really needs to take a shot here. There's Vela with the shot. Brewer should have taken that opportunity to sprawl out, go with head pressure, and then rotate. Under a minute left in the match, provided they don't go into overtime. And that'll tie it up. Brewer hit with another stalling call. Another blood timeout. Looks like he got hit in the nose this time. Yeah, with that last with that last shot by Vela. Instead of hopping back, Brewer definitely should have gone heavy on the head. Would have prevented that point tie up there. You got just under a minute left in the in regulation on this match. And realistically, we could be just a takedown away from this simply going to a minor decision.
Brewer getting his headgear back on, headed back on the mat. Brewer locking up aggressively. Thirty-three seconds left in the match. Brewer, that knee tap, he should have shot. That leg was wide open. Twenty seconds. Brewer, the good sprawl. He needs to rotate behind. He's got fifteen seconds to get those points, and they're going to be called out of bounds. Reset in the center. Nobody in control. They'll start back in neutral. Twelve seconds for anybody to score a point. Both coaches down there yelling about the time. Six seconds now, back out of bounds. There's the lock up. Three, two, one, and we'll head into overtime. Locked up in the center again. Brewer snapped the head. Thirty seconds to go. Vela, actually both competitors pretty upright by this point. Nine seconds in this first overtime. Brewer with the knee tap, didn't shoot with it though. Man, that concludes the first overtime. Start this overtime on top. Goes for the tight waist ankle. Vela quick with the stand up. He's working on that escape. If he can get it. All right, Simon, I didn't see what happened. Why? What did uh, Vela do to earn those two points? I think he was, I think Brewer was holding his hands together. Mm -hmm. Now that is something we've seen in practice is uh, blocking the hands before your opponent's up. Good mat return there by Brewer. He's got seven seconds. Really needs to swim up. There's... Working on that half. And that's going to conclude this overtime. Brewer has an opportunity to answer those points. Brewer locks up. Brewer gets behind, gets the two-point takedown. Now he's just got to hold Vela from escaping for 15 seconds. He's working in that chicken wing. Now going, nope, switch sides, flipping him. He's working Vela over, but I think that the timer's going to beat him. He did get two back points. That's going to leave us in minor decision territory. Brewer putting three points on the score for the Comets. 
Next up in the heavyweight division, we're going to have Luke Hipsher taking a forfeit and putting six on the board. And at this point, we circle around to flyweight. At the 113 class, we've got Cohen Markley facing off against Cassin's Jackson Robbins. Got a pair of freshman competitors here who I believe have faced off against each other several times in junior high. Circling in the center. And locked up. Markley with a shot. Robbins will sprawl out. Once again, locked up. Two points to Robbins as he gets control on that takedown attempt. Markley trying to roll him. He does, he'll get the two point reversal there. And he's working on trying to get that cradle in. Action goes out of bounds, they'll reset in the center. Robbins trying to sit out. Markley, quick off the mark though, prevents that, goes to the one-on-ones. Robbins feels his opponent's high, he rolls him. Starts building up the back points. Gets that half Nelson in with that reverse half. And he has that leg. This could be all she wrote for Markley. And there it'll be, Jackson Robbins, six points on the board for the pinfall. Next at 120, Gage Monero will get the forfeit. like we may have Ashton Boyer wrestling up to 132 to face off against Culver's Kyle Wagler, uh, Wager. Boyer steps back, shoots. Wager tries to sprawl. Unfortunately for him, Boyer's favorite takedown is the double leg. There's a mat return. Boyer trying to get that cradle in. Ends up underneath. Another double leg mat return there. Goes for the head lever. Weiger, two points for that reversal. And a bit of a fireman's dump there for Boyer. Gets him back in control. Starts running that half. And Boyer working to settle his weight. Weiger in trouble. And there's the pin.
That was great presence of mind by Boyer to realize how high his competitor was. Mayo Shirt with the forfeit at 138. And we'll have Landon Rigney taking the forfeit at 144. Gabe Burkett Raider, forfeit at 152. And now at 157, we're going to have Culver's Theron Carrington facing off against Levi Martin. Oh, nope. Carrington must not be here tonight. And as a matter of fact, Culver looks lined up for the handshakes. So that may make 165 a, possibly a double forfeit. And that it is. Well, ladies and gentlemen, clean sweep tonight by the Comets. Final score, cast in 69, Culver 0. And it does not look like we're queuing up any exhibition matches here. So we do want to thank you for joining us on tonight's broadcast. Uh, do... Oh, no. I was going to say do tune in for our next. However... This actually is going to be our final broadcast of the calendar year. Uh, so be paying attention and uh, join us after the new year uh, for Comets basketball. And we will have one more home Comets wrestling meet as the Comets host uh, Taylor High School. So until then, I'm Blair Zimmerman, joined on the other headset tonight by Simon McGrew. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Good night.